Hello and welcome to episode 5 of the How to Make Any Game Mechanics series. As you can see, this episode is a little bit different than the others. I've already posted the first episode onto YouTube now, and we've already started getting some suggestions. So, in the left column you can see the name of the person who suggested the idea, and on the right you can see the idea itself. I have taken the liberty of putting all of the ideas into this online random picker website. So let's head over to the website now. In the random picker website, I've just put every suggestion on a separate line and all it's going to do is just pick one of them. So let's hit this pick random item button. What's it going to be? And we got the in air dash. So this suggestion comes from Lemming. So, he wants to see an in-air dash that happens only after you press down the horizontal input when the player character is mid-air and falling. That is very specific, but let's see what we can do. So, let's open up the Unity project and get to work. Okay, in our project I've created a new folder called Episode 5, a new scene called Episode 5, and I've just opened that up. Now I'm going to right click, create a 2D square, and let's name it to player. I'm going to give it a box collider, and then I'm going to duplicate it and call it ground. So let's grab our ground, move it down, scale it, and we in fact now have a ground. I already know that we're going to need the ground layer, so I'm just going to assign it that now. Now onto our player, let's add a rigid body 2D. Come down to our project menu, right click, create a new C sharp script, and let's call this in air dash. Okay, perfect, let's open that up in VS Code. So before we start programming, let's get some sort of an idea of what we're going to be doing. Personally, I want the air dash to be self-contained and not rely on any sort of information. It would make a little bit more sense to add the jump controller and maybe get the is grounded pool, but instead, we're just going to do that all in here, so it's not dependent on the jumping script. So all we're going to do is raycast down, see if we are hitting the ground, and if we are, we know we can't air dash. If we're not hitting the ground, well, we must be in air. The next thing we're going to do is get some sort of an input. So we're probably going to check the horizontal axis and see if we're inputting A or D. Next, we're going to see if we have any dashes, and if we do, we're going to apply some sort of a force to either the left or to the right. Next, when you touch back onto the ground, we're going to reset our dashes to the num dashes variable that we're going to be creating. Again, this is going to look pretty similar to the jumping script, but it'll eventually veer off and become its own thing. So let's start with a private rigid body 2D RB. And this is just a reference to the rigid body. Let's create a serialized field. Private bool is grounded. And this is what's going to detect whether we're on the ground. Another serialized field, private, transform, and let's call this ground ray transform. This will just go at the feet of the player. Another serialized field, a private layer mask, ground layer, which we'll be setting in the inspector. And then another serialized field private int num dashes and this will keep track of how many dashes we have so maybe later on in the game you want to upgrade your dashes and now you have two dashes in the air we could just change this one value from one to two makes more sense so let's now add the dash force serialized field private int dash force and then a private int dashes left, which will just keep track of the internal number of dashes that we currently have. Okay, so in start, we can get the rigid body. And rigid body 2D. 
And then let's change our update to fixed update. And we're going to do the raycast downward is grounded is equal to physics 2d dot line cast. And then we're going to start at the center of the player to the feet of our player. And we're only going to detect the ground layer. Okay, perfect. So this will be true if there is ground under our feet and false if there isn't. Okay, let's create a update function. And let's get some player input. So float x equals input dot get axis horizontal. So now if we hit a, it'll be negative one. And if we hit d, it'll be positive one. So if x is not equal to zero, which means we're actually putting an input in, and is grounded is false, which means we're not on the ground. And because the criteria for this dash is to make sure that we're falling, we have to say rb dot velocity dot y is less than or equal to zero. So now we can say if we have dashes, so dashes left is greater than zero. Let's create a vector three for our direction. And all it's going to do is just put our x value into its x value. So vector three, x, zero, zero. We can say rb dot velocity equals vector three dot zero. So we're just gonna zero out our velocity so we're no longer falling. This will make a more satisfying dash. And now we can actually apply the force for our dash. So rb dot add force. We can say dir dot normalized times our dash force. Okay, perfect. And then just subtract one from our dashes. All right, the next thing we're going to want to do is make sure that the dashes get reset after we hit the ground. So in the fixed update, let's say if is grounded is true, then all we have to do is say dashes left equals num dashes. All right, let's open up Unity and give it a shot. Back in Unity, let's click on our player, scroll down, and assign our in-air dash script. Okay, so now we're gonna need a ground ray transform. So right click on the player and create an empty. Let's call it ground ray transform. So we don't get confused. Zoom in, put it at our player's feet, scroll back down and drag it and drop it on. Next, we can assign our ground layer to the ground. We can assign one to our num dashes and let's give a dash force of, I don't know, 250. Okay, perfect. So when we hit play, we fall and we can't dash. Well, that's because we're on the ground and this is supposed to be an in-air dash. So let's uncheck play, add a component and let's add our jump script. The jump script is laid out pretty similarly to the air dash script where we just have to put our ground ray transform in. Select our ground layer. Let's give one for our num jumps and 250 for our jump force. Now let's hit play and we should be able to jump with, I believe, the space key. Okay, we can jump, but can we dash? We can. And we can't dash when we're going upward, only when we're coming down. Perfect. Maybe if you're just jumping, this type of air dash is all you need for your project. Otherwise, there are a few things off the top of my head which leave more to be desired. The main issue is when you introduce movement and verticality. We aren't using a timer, so if we were to walk off of a platform, we'll immediately be forced into a dash. 
This is also true when we up our dash counter to 2 instead of 1, and instead of being able to dash twice, both of our dashes will combine together to create some sort of a super dash. When we think about an air dash, this is probably not the function you want in your project. Honestly, I like the idea of using movement input for the air dash, but it creates problems that can actually be quite limiting, especially when considering air movement. Even if we stuck to the movement input and tried to implement some sort of a double tap, it feels like it would only result in missed inputs of the player trying to change direction quickly and dashing by mistake. So how do we solve all of these problems? Well, I think we solve it like most games have, by changing the dash to be a separate button. If we assign the dash the same button as the jump, we can still get that limited input feel, and as we know we'll be in the air, the jump button isn't being used. To make our dash a little bit fancier and closer to what you probably imagined when you clicked on this video, I'll be changing the dash from using forces and just assign a duration while maintaining the same Y position throughout the dash. So let's get started on some of these changes. I'm just going to open up the script in VS Code. In VS Code, I think the first thing we should be doing is maybe changing some of these variables. So because we're not going to be using a force anymore, let's change this dash force to something like dash duration. Although we're not going to be using forces, we're still going to need some sort of a speed variable. So let's make another serialized field and private int dash speed. Next off, we're going to need a few variables for those timers I was mentioning. So let's come down here and create a few private variables. Private float, let's call it dash timer. And this will just be a playoff of the dash duration, but we'll be keeping track of everything internally instead. Next, we're going to use some sort of a bool. So we'll do private bool is dashing. It would be kind of cool to make this a serialized field if you want, just so you can see it in the inspector. But for now, I'll just leave it private. The next thing we're going to need is a vector three, and let's call it dash dir or dash direction. Okay, I think that's about everything we're going to need. So let's scroll down and we can already see we have an error because we changed this. It's no longer dash force, it's dash duration, but we're not going to be using this line at all. So let's just get rid of it. I think the next thing we should do is probably just make sure we're not dashing. So is dashing is false. And while we're down here, we might as well put our input code in as well. So we want to use the spacebar. So let's say and input dot get key down, and we'll use key code dot space. Okay, so the inside of the dash is going to look quite a bit different. So what we're going to do is we're going to say we are now dashing. Let's turn off gravity so we don't fall, like I mentioned earlier. And let's set our dash timer, which we aren't using yet, to equal to our dash duration. And all this is going to do is just prepare everything for when we're actually dashing. To make us actually dash, we're going to use fixed update, which is where all the physics should be handled anyways. So let's go into fixed update. And the first thing we're going to do is say if is dashing is true. So if we're dashing, let's do some stuff with our timers. So we're going to say if dash timer is greater than or equal to zero, let's do the dash. So rb.velocity equals dash direction, which we actually forgot to set down here. So let's change this dir to dash direction. And because we already assigned it up top, we can get rid of this vector three. And it's just dash dir. My bad, I didn't see that earlier. So let's come back up here and say dot normalized. And let's times this by the dash speed. So essentially this is our dash. But the problem is once we start dashing, we don't really stop. So inside the if statement, let's reduce our dash timer. So dash timer minus equals time dot fixed delta time. And this will just make sure we're doing a consistent timer in fixed update. So when our timer finally reaches down to zero, we're going to do a little bit more logic. So else 
we're no longer dashing if our timer is zero. And we can put gravity back to normal. So rb.gravityScale equals one. If you're doing anything different with the gravity scale, you're gonna wanna set that to whatever your default value is, but I'm just gonna leave it one for now. And I think that's about it. So let's head back into Unity and see how all this works out. Okay, back in Unity, we can see our air dash script and we can see that we have a few more values. So for the dash duration, I don't know, let's just use one for now. And for the dash speed, we can use something like, I don't know, three. Now let's hit play and see what happens. Our character falls, I can jump as per normal, which isn't even dependent on the dashing script. And when I try and dash, you can see we have a little bit of a better dash than what we had before. We don't fall when we're in the air, and we get a little bit more horizontal movement. So overall, I would say this is a success, but I would like to add one more line of code just to make things a little bit nicer. So let's head back into Visual Studio Code. And in Visual Studio Code, right when we set our gravity scale, let's come underneath and say rb.velocity equals vector 3.0. And all this is going to do is just get rid of all of our horizontal velocity and make us fall straight down when we're done our dash. This will especially be useful in something like a Metrovania, where you can only get to certain locations based upon an ability, like the dash we just created. So let's head back into Unity. Back in Unity, we don't have any settings to change, so let's hit play and we'll see the difference. I fall, and when I dash, I fall directly down. No more of that sliding on the ground and carrying over our momentum. And that just about sums it up for our air dash. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and if you have an idea, leave a suggestion in the comments. And as always, I'll see you guys next week.